so hi, I'm Ayush. I'm going to talk about uh, Plutus. That is one of our cost alerting uh, tool on the AWS cloud that we have built uh, as an in-house tool for us. Uh, yeah, so before we kick start, something about myself. So I work as a part of the DevOps team at Index. Uh, uh, apart from my daily regular job, my uh, that's that's the part of the DevOps activity at Index. Uh, I try to be an open source contributor to uh, in-house open source projects, which we have uh, uh, opened up for the community. You can find them at os.index.com. Uh, you can find me moderately active on Twitter at the uh, username of I am everywhere. And uh, lastly, setting up the agenda for the talk. Uh, in the next 15 minutes, I'll be I'll uh, I'll be walking you through our work that we have done at Index over the cost management that we have done, and uh, of course the uh, tool called Plutus that we have uh, built uh, for monitoring the and tracking the uh, untracked cost, uh, which uh, untracked activities, which actually causes some kind of cost fluctuation in our AWS bills. So how do we track them and how do we tackle them? That, that's the kind of uh, uh, tool which, which I will be talking about. Okay, so uh, before we jump any forward, uh, let's uh, have a brief look up at that how our AWS infrastructure uh, at a current state as, as of now looks like. So at any given time, we are approximately close to 1,500 I mean, 1, machines as of now. Uh, that includes uh, on-demand uh, spot nodes as well as the IA instances. Uh, we have more than around 50 to 60 S3 buckets that are around TBs of uh, data in it and that, that's, that's been very active uh, uh, since we are uh, handling uh, the data processing jobs at a very large scale. Uh, from the deployment perspective, uh, we have rapid multi-AZ deployments actively uh, done at, at every given hour of the day. So, uh, and now since all of these things adds up together and we still are a very uh, 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 mid-level startup company, so every penny we spend upon AWS cloud actually very, uh, that, that counts to us. So, uh, in, in, uh, as follows the last point, that uh, uh, from our perspective, we incur a significant cost in AWS Cloud and we do have to take uh, uh, a strict amount of measures onto it so that to control the cost that we incur upon AWS Cloud. Yeah, so moving forward, uh, uh, so how so far have we done uh, controlling costs on AWS Clouds? Uh, th so, these are a few success stories uh, that, that, uh, we have, that I would like to share with, with you all. So, our major... Uh, uh, cost uh, on AWS cloud actually goes on with uh, to our Hadoop clusters. So we run a lot of uh, data processing jobs on Hadoop clusters, right? So uh, definitely at, at any given part of the day. So uh, we have both our staging and production Hadoop clusters which uh, run uh, uh, for, for like 24-7 uh, 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 for, uh, for, for every uh, week or let's say for, or even for a month uh, uh, times, right? So uh, what, what happened was that uh, since uh, uh, most of uh, we we wanted that uh, we wanted to tune our Hadoop clusters in such a way so that we could uh, see that uh, that our Hadoop clusters should be scaled down and scaled up based upon the application metrics. So that it should not be the case that uh, let's say we don't want to use Hadoop cluster and uh, the all the application and uh, and the Hadoop cluster is not in uh, uh, significant use and we still are running that cluster uh, uh, like on demand instances and uh, due to which we are spending or basically uh, paying AWS for the idle cluster state, right? So we built a tool called Vamina. So yeah, just to point out, uh, uh, Ashwan, who is just going to be the next speaker, he built this tool. Uh, so we built this tool Vamina, which actually takes out the application metrics from our Hadoop cluster and uh, it then automatically scales up and scales down the cluster based upon the application metrics. So we don't typically have to with this option that uh, our uh, clusters are incurring cost because of the idle state, because they never go down to an idle state in a typical from now. Uh, the next thing is that uh, the next thing is that uh, we use typically spot instances a lot. Uh, around fifty percent of our infrastructure is on spot. So uh, we do need to find the right balance. Then, since spot uh, actually comes with a fix, that we do need to decide that the right availability zone and the right amount of uh, right uh, the spot price for it. So we do we do wanted a kind of a resilient infrastructure on spot that uh, which could be a kind of a reliable one that so that we could uh, rely that it should that our instances on spot should not go down very frequently. So then we wrote a tool called Matsya. So what this tool does is it basically uh, uh, identifies the right spot market in which in which we could uh, launch our cluster, uh, which uh, based upon the spot price and the availability of the of the, that particular instances in in, the, uh, uh, in 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 that particular availability zone. And the added capability to this is that let's say in if that particular instance doesn't match the criteria that that we are actually having uh, for the uh, for the spot price and as well as the availability. Then we then we switch back to the on-demand instances and our cluster and our cluster of machines is like fully functional back again. So, and uh, if, if we we uh, approximately calculated it how much it actually impacted us over the year and that's that's uh, that's one of the very true findings for us that it's almost saved a million dollars for us for for over a year. Uh, yeah. 
moving forward so uh, as you can see in the following graph that that's being uh, that, that's our basically uh, cost pattern for like uh, uh, past two years uh, the monthly revenue bill that we encountered so uh, if you can see before february 2016 right we were incurring uh, uh, we actually incurred to at uh, in some of the months close to 200000 dollars a month right so we wanted to really control that and uh, in the feb 2016 month uh, we then uh, came up with the matsya and vamana to, uh, tools like matsya and vamana and then we kind of stabilized our cost right so everything was going pretty much fine for us when somewhere around september 2016 we realized that our cost has spiked up to uh, uh, something uh, another level of escalation and we didn't know the uh, the uh, the worst part of this was that we didn't know that what actually spiked this cost so then that was a real challenge for us that uh, how do we keep track of all these events which actually lead us to these kind of uh, fluctuating costs and uh, and hence lead us to a kind of a, a hefty AWS bills that we that we need to pay over the month right so uh, we took this up as a challenge and uh, then we uh, uh, thought of the, this as an idea that why not have a kind of an automated tool with which uh, actually helps us identify that okay keep, what are the resources that uh, we would like to closely monitor uh, upon AWS cloud which we seem to be uh, thinking that these are the kind of volatile resources which might have some untracked activity and we might lead to some of the fluctuating costs. So we thought of building an automated tool around it and uh, this gave birth to something which we which we're going to talk next is the Plutus and yeah. Uh, so uh, before talking about Plutus, it's, uh, we, we definitely uh, uh, explored upon the options that uh, uh, how exactly we could uh, see that if some open source solution is available to it. So Netflix size is definitely uh, available, but uh, uh, we didn't want it to go something, uh, we wanted something a more level of customization uh, as per our application needs. So we didn't go with any of the uh, solutions that we could see uh, are available on the internet because we didn't uh, feel that, that, that those are kind, are kind of fitting into the kind of as, uh, uh, aspirations that we were looking for, our, for our, the challenges to be solved by the product. Uh, yeah, so now uh, we introduce Lutus to you that it's a kind of a notification tool which reads AWS cost usage report on a daily basis and sends alerts to you based upon some defined threshold limits. That let's say some defined, some threshold limits for a particular resource process and uh, we do need to then process that and immediately send alert to people in whatever form possible. Right? So uh, that, that's how on a very high level how Plutus works for us. Uh, so this is a sample Slack config. So Slack is an internal tool we use for the communication uh, in, an, on, in office wide. So this is a kind of a simple JSON config that we specify. So it takes up the arguments like the service we kind of monitor that is AWS S3 let's, uh, in the first example. Uh, the channel let's say we want to alert in, in the Slack channel the kind of uh, uh, person that you want to get alerted to. So in our case, typically our engineering managers are typically very much interested upon their systems causing how much uh, bill upon the AWS. So uh, we do specify the engineering manager's name. Then we specify the granularity that at what rate you want that, re that report to be uh, fitting into you. That is you want the uh, checks to be happened on a daily basis or on a weekly basis or on a monthly basis. And uh, then uh, so Plutus supports the user-defined tags that uh, it's very important for us. We follow this culture by heart at Index that whatever resource we spawn up at, at, at AWS, we definitely have to target. So definitely then we, we actually leverage this thing and uh, uh, in, in Plutus. So uh, all the users, so if Plutus takes the input of the user-defined tags, like let's say the name tag and the, its value to be platform hyphen analytics. So it would identify the resources with, with this particular user-defined tags and uh, calculate uh, and calculate a computed cost for, for them for it and uh, then would compare to a certain sample threshold with uh, which is specified let's say 0 0.03 dollars right uh, yeah this is sample slack config and this is how you get alerted on slack so let's say uh, somehow uh, uh, your uh, some day or some any given point of the day your uh, this uh, your threshold actually crosses uh, uh, for, for any given cost that you have specified in a json config and immediately uh, you, are, you would be getting alerted on Slack even if there's a 0.7 uh, difference in the uh, 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 dollars of cost also then immediately you, you will be getting alerted. So that is how we kept uh, a kind of a control on our AWS cost and how, how actually uh, we could track the, all the unknown events on, 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 the, on the cloud which, which we uh, otherwise wouldn't have been able to. So now let, let's take a deep dive into it and see that how they, they, uh, we came about uh, driving this tool. Uh, uh, so uh, from the AWS billing console, uh, we leveraged out the AWS cost usage report. That's a CUR, the short form notation goes to. So uh, CUR gives us the advantage that we can daily uh, 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 take uh, this CUR and store into an S3 bucket. 
AWS gives us an option to that, right? So once we uh, configure this parameter and in the in the AWS billing console that uh, our cost usage report has to be supplied daily into uh, the S3 bucket. Uh, now, uh, with the cost usage report, the beautiful thing that AWS actually provides us as a part of this is that it provides it with a sample schema for the CSV file of the uh, uh, a, uh, for the cost usage report that it is being given to. So now, what we can do is that uh, once once we have the CSV file and the schema associated with it, right? So we straight away imported this this particular CSV file along with its schema onto AWS service called Redshift, which is a kind of a large scale DB store for uh, offered by AWS. So once we imported this to Redshift, so Redshift itself had the capability to convert this entire CSV file into a kind of a uh, SQL store or kind of a database uh, database with, with, through which on which we can run queries in a lot easier manner. Which otherwise we would have to be like passing the CSV file, and that would have been a, like a very hectic job. So yeah, once once uh, we are having a, 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 a kind of a, a report uh, in our AWS Redshift. We then read our JSON configs, which we earlier specified for uh, reading the uh, for for uh, for the alert configurations that we have set. Based upon the uh, so yeah, I'll just roll back. So based upon these parameters, it basically forms the queries which are to be run, which have to be run upon the AWS Redshift. Now, uh, once the queries that are run upon AWS, AWS Redshift, so the output for those queries would be the AWS for the cost for those particular resources. Now, once we have that cost, we compare that against a certain set of thresholds. If the threshold actually crosses, then we have to get the alert. Now, how we automate this complete process? So, we use the serverless approach as serverless is like pretty much dominant in this complete session over here. So, uh, we use AWS Lambda for completely automating this. We, we have two or three Lambda functions in together all of this, which actually uh, does all this job together. That is pulling out the uh, CUR reports from uh, uh, AWS billing console, importing it to S3 bucket, and then... Uh, finally uh, importing it to Redshift with a particular given schema and then running queries on top of it and also sending alerts to Slack. All this, all this complete job is done by AWS Lambda for us and uh, we have set this as a kind, kind of a cron and uh, we, it, it runs on a daily basis for us and uh, the kind of impact that has left us, okay let's see. So this is our, so the graph that we uh, saw earlier, right? Uh, so up till uh, September 2016 when we saw this kind of fluctuation in our AWS bill, right? So, post September 2016, this is the uh, graph that we have followed and so far uh, it's been like an year for us and we haven't encountered any such event uh, in the past one year post deployment of Lutus in production that uh, we, could, we couldn't even, that, that we couldn't track uh, kind of an unknown event in the, uh, uh, on, on the uh, resources that we are using upon AWS cloud. So, it's been pretty much very stable for us. Uh, we, are, we are actively working on uh, making this project as an open source, it has a scope of a lot of improvements and uh, and a lot of features uh, have, have to be added on and to this. We have a lot of plans for this. So yeah, pretty, pretty much this is all about from my side. Uh, I'm just, just to mention that uh, we would be soon releasing this as an open source project. And uh, yeah, that it, it would be great that if you guys could uh, just uh, have a look upon this code and uh, and we would be really great if you could uh, help, help us contribute on this and uh, make this tool a better uh, thing for the community as a whole, not just for Linux. Yeah, thanks, thanks. Oh, we have two minutes for Q&A. Thank you. <laughs> so if you have any quick question that you want to get it answered right now, you can use this opportunity. Or else, um, they're going to be out there during lunch. Uh, you, you, you've noted down how he looks. So you can find him over lunch and then speak to him uh, if you have any questions. There's one question over there. Yeah, sir. Yeah. On AWS, if uh, any instance or uh, which is not, uh, you have uh, mentioned on your uh, JSON script, it has been created, it incurred cost, how will you identify that? I'm um, sorry sir, I couldn't follow you, I'm really sorry. Uh, in, in your JSON script, you have specified a uh, cost for S3 and uh, tagged it, right? Mm -hmm. In case if it is not tagged, and, uh, a particular object has been created with somebody um, by mistake and they tinker cost. Whether yes, sir. So that, 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 we, uh, that I completely agree. That's a bottleneck for me, definitely. So if the instance or the particular resource, so let's say, if that is not tagged, right? So uh, that is the next use case actually to be on a sun solving uh, in, in uh, the Plutus code base. 
So uh, in in the current setup that um, that which I explained to you, yeah, definitely it's a bottleneck that if that particular resource is not that, it won't be able to identify that particular instance, right? So, uh, but we have that as a kind of a feature request from one in our developer teams only that uh, what if we want to track all those resources which are untagged on AWS and how do we identify those resources? 